Hi kids, it's Pastor Carolyn and I just want to let you know that last week was so fun for me. I got to go to your houses, the kids that go to South, I knocked at your door, I kept my distance and I got to have a little visit with all of you and that just filled my heart. Now we have a great lesson today. We're going to start with our mystery letter box. And last week I gave you a new letter for a new word. I gave you the letter W. Today I'm going to give you the letter E. And this word has four letters. And if you put all the letters in the correct order, you still need to get two more, you will get a word that is a theme that means it's a word that connects all the lessons that we're doing in four weeks. And if you figure out what that word is, you can go ahead and type it in the comments below. Let's take a look at our mystery box. In here is an object, a clue for today's story. And I have a flashlight here of this bright light. And we're going to see a bright light in today's story. Now our story is called Saul and I need to give you a little bit of background on who this man was. Now at Easter time, we know that Jesus died for our sins. He was crucified, nailed to the cross. God raised him to life on the third day. And before he went up to heaven, he was on earth for 40 days, visiting with his disciples, teaching them, telling them that a helper was going to come. And then Jesus rose up and went back to heaven. And seven days after that, the disciples were meeting in a room and the Holy Spirit came. God's presence, his power came on them. And remember, it came in the form of fire that landed on them, which didn't burn them up. And that was God's presence. The Holy Spirit came to them and stayed and the Holy Spirit came inside their hearts and gave them courage. Remember that? The Holy Spirit gave them courage to go out and share the good news of Jesus. And they started doing this and more and more Christians started to um, come on the earth and they would tell other people who never heard about Jesus and the good news that he saves them. And so they were going out and telling others about this wonderful Jesus and the good news. Now, not everyone liked what these new Christians were doing. In fact, there was some enemies of the Christians and one of those enemies, his name was Saul. And we're gonna learn about Saul. He was persecuting the Christians. That word just means he was hurting them. He was trying to stop them from sharing Jesus with others. And he was so determined and so relentless that Jesus had other plans for him. And let's see what happens to his life. So this is called, this story is called Saul. I'm so smart and important, Saul thought as he traveled to Damascus. Saul was a well-known Jewish religious teacher and he was very proud. Not the good kind of proud. He was also someone who was feared by those who followed Jesus. On this trip, like so many times before, he was on his way to get rid of people who followed Jesus. But God had other plans. Suddenly, a bright light shone from heaven and it blinded Saul. I can't see, Saul yelled as he stumbled to the ground. Saul, why do you hate me, said a deep, booming voice. Who are you, Lord, Saul asked. I'm Jesus, the voice answered. Go to the city of Damascus and wait for me there. Saul waited in Damascus, terribly afraid and unable to see, but Jesus did not leave him without help. He sent his friend Ananias to Saul. Lay your hands on him, Jesus said. I want Saul to see and be filled with my Holy Spirit. So Ananias put his hands on Saul's head. Something that looked like fish scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. 
all at once, Jesus' spirit filled his heart with love and joy. Saul, the one who hated Jesus, became one of Jesus' most famous followers, the disciple named Paul. Our verse today, John 3, 17. God did not send his son Jesus into the world to condemn its people. That means to tell them how bad and awful they were. No, he sent him to save them. Now these are Jesus's words for you kids. I want to live in the hearts of people all around the world. I invite people to come to me no matter what they've done in the past. What matters is today. If people young or old ask me to forgive their sins, I will be their best friend forever. And I want to be your best friend too. Now from this story, kids, we can see that Jesus transforms. That means he changes lives. And Saul, he was like this before he encountered Jesus. See these sunglasses I have on? They're sort of bl bl dark. We're going to pretend that I can't see very well through them. All right. Now, Saul, he was blinded to the truth of who Jesus was. And he was walking with deception. That means he was deceived. He was walking in a lie. And the enemy, the devil, had lied to him. And he was going out and trying to hurt Christians, the followers of Jesus. And when God encountered him, Jesus met him on the way to Damascus. A bright blinding light came and Jesus spoke to him and he fell to the ground. And even though he couldn't see, it's like he was given new eyes. Sort of like when I look through these glasses. These are my reading glasses. They help me to see clearly. And Saul's spiritual eyes, his heart was opened to the truth and he could see clearly for the first time, oh, Jesus is really the son of God. And I now realize I've been doing the wrong thing. I've been trying to hurt the followers of Jesus when they've been walking in the truth. And so his eyes were open to the truth, his heart was changed, and he became a follower of Jesus. Now, his name even changed. His name was first Saul, and it turned to Paul. And Paul means, his name means humble, which is the opposite of what he started off as really prideful, arrogant, he thought he knew everything, to humble, where he recognized that God is big and he is small. And, you know, we can undergo this transformation too in our hearts when we follow Jesus and say yes to him. He transforms us. And when we read the Bible, kids, he changes how we think, how we see ourselves, how we see God, how we see others. And the Bible even um, challenges us to see others. Maybe we're, um, we have enemies in our life, people that do bad things to us or hurt us. And the Bible tells us to think in a new way, like forgive your enemies, pray for them, love them. And so he changes our heart. Now it's kind of like this heart. Saul, he had a dark heart before. And when he encountered Jesus, he had a changed, transformed heart. And that's what God wants to do for us too. He's in the business of changing lives. Now, I want us to pray and then I have a little activity for you and it has to do with your name. So let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that we know you. And for those who don't know you already, we pray that we could share the love of Jesus with others and tell them the good news. Thank you for Saul, who was transformed by you, Jesus, that you met him and you gave him new eyes to see, new spiritual eyes to see, and his name became Paul. And he then went out to tell others about the good news. 
And I pray, Lord, that many, many people would come to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now, speaking of names, here's my activity for you. I want you to go with your parents to the computer and do a Google search. And I want you to type in your name and the word meaning. So you can type in what does my name mean or something like that. And I did the same thing on my computer and my first name is Carolyn and Carolyn means strong. And I've known that growing up. Now I'm not a big man with muscles, but strong can mean other things. Strength, strength of character. And my name also means little and womanly. It means beautiful woman and joy and happiness of song. So those are some of the meanings of my name. So I want you to put in your name in the Google search. I want you to write down what your name means. And then in the comments below, can you type in your first name and tell me what your name means? You can even look up the biblical meaning of your name. Sometimes your name has a biblical meaning. And if you find out that you kind of don't really like the meaning of your name, that's okay. Because do you know what matters the most, kids? Is who God says you are. And I'm going to tell you who God says you are. God says that you are loved and you are chosen and you are accepted, you are special and you are made in God's image. So I want you to remember that today. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next time.